Her condition, we have a 55-year-old female who has a history of herpetic infection, and this was at the age of 10 in her left eye. Now, for those not familiar, this is really herpes in the eye, and you can see from the pictures here to give you some idea. Now, at the age of 30, she had a penetrating keratoplasty due to severe corneal, let's say, cloudiness or opacification. And for the penetrating keratoplasty, what they do is they take the cornea out and put a donor cornea in. And you can see here from the pictures what that procedure is like. And during this last year, she started to complain that her left eye, that one with the history, is having a decreasing visual acuity. She also had redness and discomfort. And three months prior to the start of care, she'd seen another ophthalmologist who prescribed corticosteroid eye drops, but there's no change as a result. So the start of care exam, visual acuity, 2025 in her right eye and 2060 in her left eye. An endothelial pigment was discovered, as you can see here in the picture. This is the bottom layer of cells of the cornea and a normal healthy cornea. There is no pigment and intraocular pressure, 16 millimeters of mercury in the right eye and 14 in the left. And it discovered as well, she would had a previous superior iridectomy, and that was performed when she had the penetrating keratoplasty. And this is a procedure where they put a small hole in the top of the iris to prevent interocular pressure from increasing due to what they would call an angle closure that can happen after some surgeries like a penetrating keratoplasty. She also had conjunctival hyperemia, which you can see in the picture here to explain that. And she had a breakup time of less than eight seconds. I'm referring to the time it takes the tear film to break up, and a diagnosis of dry eye usually occurs any time under 10 seconds for that tear film to break up. And you can see a little bit here from the picture on the right to give you some idea. They use a dye. They can see with the dye how long it takes the tear film to break up. And she also was discovered to have mild keratitis in her left eye and mild opacification over all of her cornea in her left eye. Her treatment, Neurology 14, was done. And this is done 12 treatments, one treatment per week over a period of three months with the 905 Delta Pro model, along with acupuncture and diet recommendations. After that 12 treatments over three months, Results revealed her acuity, no change in her right eye, but there was no problem there either. Her left eye, she had one line of vision improvement from 2060 to 2050, which you can see here on the eye chart. Uh, no longer any conjunctival hyperemia. Now, breakup time went up from less than 8 seconds in both eyes to 13 seconds in both eyes. And remember, less than 10 is dry eye, 15 and above is good breakup time. And also, no keratitis any longer. And the patient herself, she reported improvement in her general eye condition. And a follow-up was done six months after treatment. And the improvements from the treatment have been maintained. So I want to thank you for following along. And I trust this case report summary will be of use to you or someone you know. And a very special thank you to Dr. Pena. Dr. Pena specializes in ophthalmology and he practices cataract and refractive surgery and he does a lot of public health in ophthalmology. And this is with respect to people who can't really afford the treatment. So he does public health to go out into different communities and different countries to perform this service so people can have some quality of life who otherwise wouldn't be able to access this. And in combination with homeopathy and traditional Chinese medicine in his practice, he also includes microcurrent and, of course, comotherapy in the treatment of ocular conditions. And for those interested, if you follow the link in the newsletter, you can have a look at Dr. Pena's books. We'll see you next time.